Hello everyone. Today we have among us our respected director of ISA Kolkata, Professor Shomitra Banerjee. Hello sir. First of all, congratulations. And like, how do you feel like uh, being the director of the such a national research institute? Like, how uh, your well, it is definitely an honor, but also a lot of responsibilities because managing a national institute where there are so many students, their future, their well-being, everything rests on the director's shoulders. So naturally, it's a lot of responsibility. So I have to shoulder it anyway. Thank you. It should be hard to manage both uh, classes as well as academic work. Sure. Yes. So you uh, started your academics uh, doing B.Tech from engineering background and then you uh, switched to the field of science. Uh, what was the motivation in, like, from switching from engineering to science? Uh, I did my B.Tech, M.Tech, Ph.D. in electrical engineering. And then I taught at IIT Kharagpur in electrical engineering department for 23 years. And uh, during that time I did research on electrical engineering, but the course of my research brought me closer to physics because I was working on engineering problems, but related to nonlinear dynamics. Okay. <coughs> so that brought me closer to physics, but at some point of time, I, I just thought that I would change. I've done one thing for too long, Let's do something which is foreign to me. So, sir, you, uh, you have done your master's in IIT Delhi yes. and also PhD from there. IIT. And as you said, you are uh, teaching in IIT Kharagpur for many years. So, how do you feel the contrast between ISER and IITs in their academic life or campus life? What's your view? They are actually similar because they are same kind of systems. Unlike the European or American universities, in India we have systems of institution. IIT is a system, NIT is a system, similarly ISER is a system. But as far as the, uh, apart from the subjects taught, the rest of the things are similar between IITs and the ISERs. So, the system is similar, the rules and regulations are similar, so most of the things are similar. Only IITs are much bigger, much bigger. Uh, number of students, number of hostels, number of, the complexity is much bigger than this institute, yes. So, that is the only feature? That's the only, only feature, otherwise it's basically the same. Like there is a common notion that if you want to like, start earning early in your life, you want to back placements and go to IITs. If you are more interested in research, then come to ISERS. Like, what would you like to say about these kind of opinions? See, at one point of time, this was a reasonable assumption. You want to go to a job, go to IITs, because the moment you pass out of that, you get a job. Or go to engineering in general. But no longer. Now many engineers are remaining unemployed and many scientists are getting better employment. And therefore, that division, that perception that if you study science, you will not get a better job, that is no longer there. Many students of ours have reasonably good placements. But here, this institute had a mandate. Why was this institute created? Because the country needed a larger number of scientific manpower who are trained to be in the field of research. So our mandate is to train students for a career in research. But that does not mean everybody who comes to ISR have to go into research. They can choose any field. So as we know, uh, you have a special interest in music, you play violin very well. So uh, alongside science, academics, like how did you, or uh, particularly when did you start learning violin? Well, I started learning violin not at a very young age. I started when I started with PhD. So <laughs> reasonably, reasonably late, yes. 
I was interested, but I didn't get opportunity before that. So in IIT Delhi, there was an opportunity to learn. I started learning, but after that, I continued after I came to West Bengal to teach at IIT Kharagpur. I continued. I mean, there is a very common notion that uh, scientists have a special love for music. I can like many examples are there, uh, be it Albert Einstein or Richard Feynman or even Dr. A. P. J. Abdul Kalam played Vina. So, uh, mm. when you say scientists and music, you could fish out three examples, right? Yes, there is, but it is not special to scientists. People of many fields have similar interests. So, for example, as I as you know, I did my studies in engineering. There are quite a large number of engineers who were basically musicians. Buddha Dev Dasavatar was basically engineer, right? So there are many. So it is not anything special to science. People from any field can be interested in music. So can scientists. So that's all. And as a student, like when you are of our age, like in school or colleges, what was your dream like at that time? What you wanted to be? Well, my dreams actually fluctuated so widely that uh, it's difficult to say what it is now. People go to study something because their parents want them to. So in our time it was so. So I went to study engineering because my parents wanted me. But what I wanted to be that fluctuated from being an artist, being a musician, being a literature, being everything but engineer or scientist. <laughs> that love developed later. That so, love developed sir, later. as a student, what were the mistakes that you would advise us not to commit? Oh, that's a rather difficult question. <laughs> Well, most students think that uh, CGPA or grades, these are the ultimate achievable things. CGPA or grade are important, but not all important. Uh, being in a in an atmosphere where you can contribute meaningfully to the society, that is more important. That means, even if you are not all that good, just eight pointer, but you contribute to the society in various ways, then you learn a lot more regarding life than by studying alone, right? So, one kind of mistake is to, to get into things so that you don't study at all. Another kind of mistake, I would say, is to study only and do nothing else. Thus, there are both sides. There are rare breed of students who can manage both best, but that is rare. So I would say, take part in various types of activities, take leadership positions, take and, and enrich your experiences. And it should be varied experience. And then you will be in a better position to contribute in a meaningful way to society after you graduate. So, Doing badly in academics is not good and focusing only on academics and nothing, nothing else is also not good, I would say. But if you can manage both, that's the best. So we have to keep a balance. Yes. Uh, For example, I was not the topper in my class and I did not regret it at all. I did not regret it because that's not what I aspired for. I aspired for a full life. I would be in everything, I was in everything when I was a student, you can inquire. And so, so I don't, don't look back and regret that I did not, did not, I did not spend enough time to academics so that I would be a topper, I'm fine. Thank you sir. And also on a different topic, uh, as you said that IIT is a much larger number of hostels. So, what, what did you say about the hostel construction year and also the two-year IP students? Masters of Science. Uh, Masters of Science students, they have to... It is unfortunate that we do not have enough hostels. Uh, we are going to construct, it is going to start soon. 
but uh, it is really unfortunate that at the right time we did not construct. Hmm? Mm -hmm. it sh we should have constructed a few years back. The way it happens is that in such institutes, after it is founded, there is a project period during which the support by the government is of one kind and after the project period is over, that means the institute has been founded, it is another time. When the project period was there, the number of students that we had did not warrant the construction of another hostel. So uh, the institute decided not to construct at this stage. But when the project period is over, no further money comes from the government for constructions of this kind. And so we have had some difficulty, but we are going to you know, go around that. Sir, and also uh, a little bit like we are diverting to academics. Uh, there are many students uh, who dream of coming to uh, ISERS or IISC or in the research field, but uh, there are many students who think of ISER as a second option, like uh, they couldn't clear medical entrance exams or like they did not get a desired branch in their desired engineering college. Those kinds of students also come to ISER and the number is also significant. So what do you think, like is it uh, right or what should these kinds of students do? What should you tell them? See, my own opinion is that come to science only if you love science. Do not come to science if you run out of options. So, uh, I, I know there are some students who did not really want to come to science, but because of circumstances they landed here. But many of them, through the course of their studies, develop love for science and then do well. For them it is fine. But there are also students that do not love, do not develop the love for science and uh, for them it is not the right setting. So I would say if you realize, realize early on what you want to be, just pursue that dream. And not everybody has to you know, study through ISR. Is there any alternative for those kind of students who like land up in ISRs? They have to choose their, their option on their own. ISER cannot uh, offer an option which is not on an ISER option. Like, they have to choose. ISER can only offer you do well through our studies and then when it comes to choice of a career, we can sort of help in choosing the right kind of career if you are not really interested in you know, a career in research and teaching. That's possible. See, once one is out of I said, there are various careers of career options available. You have been you have been trained in science, and therefore you know how science teaches you to think, and that needs to be conveyed to people, right? Therefore, science being science communicator is a career choice. Newspapers have science reporters. Who will be a science reporter? Unless one knows science, you cannot be a science reporter proper, right? Therefore, that is another career option. Similarly, you will see that there are many career options that we normally do not, do not see. Huh? Teaching in schools, that's also a career option. Now, building their mentality when they are not yet ripe, that's the right time to catch people and yes, that's, that, that's a perfectly fine career option. So similarly, there are many career options that are available and people do go to, you know, uh, administration, management, and all kinds of uh, activities. All these are open once you are through a system like this. So there are no uh, lack of opportunities, there is just lack of awareness. Yes, there is a lack of awareness. But at the same time, let me tell you again that the system is mandated to prepare students for a career in teaching and research. So mm -hmm. that is where our country needs more manpower. So our mandate is that. And so many first year students who have joined this year, uh, many of them question that the 2.5 uh, months they have, summer break, how should they utilize this time? Like should they go for internships or how to apply for internships like that? First year, mm -hmm. go home and be with your parents. Because your parents are missing you, so far you have been with your parents, suddenly they are out, you are out, 
be with your parents that's very important do not go for i i would not recommend going for an internship in the first year in the second year also i do not because that is the time you have when you can study on your own read on your own read literature do whatever you feel like go for trekking chill the second year yes third year onwards it makes sense why because till the first year and second year you are not you do not have you have not yet studied enough to do a meaningful project by the end of the third year you are in that position and therefore then a, a internship starts to become meaningful so the summer vacation between the third year and the fourth year and the, the one that is between fourth year and fifth year these are the two meaningful times for doing summer internship and i do not recommend you to do summer internship for others there is i know there is a bit of craze mm. for summer internship i know that many people go for summer internship because of peer pressure this side this guy is going for that this guy is going for that and therefore i need to go otherwise what am i doing this kind of sudden hollowness comes i am not going for summer internship everybody is else is going bad be on your own okay everybody is different and therefore everybody needs to souls are do i need a summer project now or i have missed out reading literature so long while i was preparing for all these exams and now i have time i have to read this is also a very important thing how many of the students read literature I, this is this is something that i am making a point most students do not read literature they they run after other things but literature is this thing by which you build your own psychology you you understand the society so, so spend time on that Thank you, sir. Actually, as you said, it is literally a phase among students, and and you know what really elevates our anxiety. Uh, uh, so, twenty-three MS students, you have heard what our director had said. No need to take so much pressure from the first year itself. You will have enough time to think upon it. Go home and be with your parents. Be with your friends. Go back to your place. Build contacts. that is what really matters at this age the other things are minor uh, also sir uh, uh, many students have a knack for computer science mm. so we have an option the, our bsl students we have an option to do minor in cs but what are your views if uh, cs would be a departmental major like students can take major on cs we are working towards that we have that in, as our plan but we have not yet been able to go there so we are in stages introducing cs subjects but yes that is that is within our plans and another uh, thing that uh, ms thesis outside the institute like for biology department it has been completely stopped to do ms thesis outside the institute uh, other departments have still given some relaxation so what would you say on that uh, is uh, ms thesis uh, doing outside the institute not like needed or it's not required like shouldn't there be some relaxation like students should be allowed mm, this is a somewhat sensitive question but i would say that if you are in an institute if you do your project there depending on the faculty members who are there obviously no institute can cover all possible specializations or research areas in a field and therefore no institute can say that uh, all areas you can work on but in every institute whatever areas in which faculties work students ultimately learn that and that does not mean that they have to be in the same field all through their lives okay i have been i study something and i am in something else right so mm. i am sitting here as an example that whatever you study or do as your my final year thesis that need not be what you do your phd on or post doc on or research on it can be completely different but there is an advantage of doing project within the institute that is uh, 
there you are uh, able to interact with the faculty for a longer period of time you go somewhere else there you are interacting only with the faculty member with whom you are associated the extent of interaction is not exactly the same that's one thing secondly it becomes very difficult for us to monitor what the student is doing and therefore there is a sort of skepticism as to how is working out in some cases it has not worked out in fact in many cases it has not worked out well in some cases it does there is mixture the problem is that the cases where it does not work out somebody has gone somewhere did not do much how do you evaluate evaluation becomes problem hmm? so because of these issues and because because the evaluation becomes problem somebody who has done a proper job they sometimes get penalized because nobody understands what he is doing therefore keeping in this in mind i would rather suggest that it is better to do the project within the institute again that does not mean you have to stick to that field for the rest of your life does not mean that but actually the craze is for going abroad wherever you do your summer internship some students plan to continue to do the, the final year project there and in many cases that is abroad and that becomes a bigger problem because that that becomes even big, difficult more but even more difficult to to evaluate how much actually has been done whether the student has gone there and then gone off in a in a tourism trip and there have been such cases so i mean from social media we come to know don't don't worry when this is it's not that we we do never go to get to know what a student is doing the point is that uh, therefore it is always better to to do the summer internship within the institute under somebody who is working here but there are exceptional situations as i said where a student is doing really good work abroad under some uh, or some other institution there have been such instances therefore my answer would not be a stark yes or stark no there are both the possibilities but uh, what actually happens is that if you talk if you ask me to give a general recommendation they now say try to do your project within the institute hmm for this reason i am not saying by by that that there is no good people outside i am not saying that all people here are the best i am not saying that either but what i am saying is that since this particular work is evaluated you get a grade out of that and you also need recommendations for applying other places keep this in mind and that becomes easier if you do your that's all so and uh, i'm not discouraging from 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 doing it outside I mean, people can still do that uh, but as yet our system is that it is a integrated bsms program mm. in which you are supposed to do your master's project here your master's project is evaluated here because it is evaluated here therefore it is necessary for us to know what you are doing how you are progressing whether you are stuck somewhere whether somebody else can help you to get out of that that things so all these things we can do if you are here with us go somewhere suddenly we don't know if you need help we don't know hmm? that becomes a problem in some cases so and also actually in uh, our institute or in general isers uh, hold the pride in allowing the students like as it had been previously uh, allowing the students to you know, like go outside for the ms thesis like as you said uh, building connections like uh, if students uh, want to go abroad or other institutes like it uh, helps to build them connections i guess or like at least they can know that what are the differences uh, in india and abroad in the research culture or uh, sort of that so you know, see that you can complete your ms and go and figure that same same things out what is the difference in research culture you can figure that out so so everything can be done after you have completed something the craze is to go to germany in the third year to do a project right that is the craze 
and I am telling you that that's not a very good place. That is not a very good place. That does not mean nobody has gone there and done a good work. Yes, people have. But this craze, craze means that there is an irrational component to it. That is not what I am recommending, that's all. You can find out the research culture in different places through various means. By completing here going, by reading literature, by talking to people, by, by entering collaboration with other people. Now the world is pretty small. Thank you, sir. And also, uh, I have uh, one more question. The uh, thing is, there is a popular saying in in a popular saying that there are uh, no bad students, only bad teachers. <laughs> what do you think about that? No. The first part, surely I subscribe to. There is no bad student. Because uh, those who are known to be bad students, they are also good at something else. We have only failed to identify what they are good at. Right? Not only we have failed to identify what they are good at, they themselves have failed to identify what they are good at. So often it is, it is so that they could have been good at something else. But they landed in this institute and they don't, uh, this is not their calling. Hmm? This, this is a typical situation that I have encountered. But all the students are good at something. I have never encountered a student, a single student in my almost 40 years of teaching career, who is not good at something. Hmm? It is only those things they are good at, A, they themselves do not understand, B, the society doesn't let them understand, C, we fail to understand. And therefore, in many cases, uh, the student does not get adequate support to strengthen their own strength, thus they tend to feel their failure. They are not. That's one type. The other type is where they fall prey to some um, bad habits. These, these come in various shapes and sizes, therefore I am not elaborating. But uh, students fall prey to certain habits and then they completely lose track of academics. That is bad. But if you just peel the surface and look into the students, their minds, their ability, what they could have been, you will find that these are you know, enormous opportunities, there are enormous possibilities in the students. These students who are actually marked as useless. They are also, they can be guided to become assets of the society. But unfortunately, it's due to some reason, they have become victim to certain habits. These are, these are problems. But what I am saying is that there is no bad student. Now the second part. See, being teacher is not a very easy thing because we may, a, a particular teacher may know many things but may not be able to express, okay. In that case, if the student, uh, I mean, breaks the barrier, there is sort of a barrier between the teacher and the student at distance, if the student breaks that barrier and reaches out to the teacher, there is a, there is an ocean of knowledge there. So often this happens, every teacher is not as expressive as everybody else. I would, not, I would say do not brand them as bad teachers because in the, in the class they may not be able to express themselves the way any, somebody else could, right? So in those cases, I mean, it's necessary for the student to reach out. But uh, so when, when you talk, talk about, you know, bad student, good student, bad teacher, good teacher. Just keep this spectrum in mind. Hmm? There is a whole spectrum. But in our institute, I can tell you that all faculty members are sort of almost the best in their respective areas. Hmm? That I, at least I can guarantee. The only thing is that some people may be expressive, some people may not. And therefore, 
sitting in the student's position, I can see that it may be difficult for them to appreciate the goodness in all teachers. True. Hmm. There, you need to go for a little bit. Actually, as you said, a few professors have said in this thing that um, that uh, I may not be the best uh, teacher or I may not teach great but uh, if you reach out to me I will try my best to like explain that's exactly that's what I'm saying sure mm -hmm. so at the end of the day you are missing my question yes yes I mean students are human teachers are human too yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you have to <laughs> you have to remember that teachers are human too so uh, I mean, when I teach in the class I do make mistakes and I expect the students to point out oh, that there is a mistake, sir. Sometimes I deliberately make mistakes. <laughs> and those who have attended my class may have noticed that. I sure. deliberately make yes, mistakes yes, so sir. that students are attentive. Hmm? That's my style. Uh, well, there, there, are, there are different styles of uh, different teachers. So one question uh, we have uh, received a lot. Students say that attendance especially even uh, in India actually it is a big barrier for many of the students uh, like I if I frame it this way that uh, if a student uh, does not attend the class for a particular professor uh, like be it any reason like maybe he doesn't like the teaching style of the professor or uh, he may not be able to keep up with the pace of the teaching or in general he doesn't like the course a particular course out of many so he doesn't attend the class uh, he may find it even boring so uh, should it be treated as an insult to the professor or uh, like professors can think this as uh, they need to work upon making it uh, engaging for the students or maybe changing the course or course. modifying the course well students who uh, who miss a few classes, they are not a point of worry at all for us. Because many things can happen due to which a student can miss classes. Miss a class or two. But habitually missing, attendance less than 10%. Hmm? These things happen, you know that, right? These are points of worry. Now, why does, does that happen? A. I said that a student might fall prey to certain bad habits due to which this may happen. B. A student doesn't come to a particular class, some particular topic was started, next class he or she comes and then doesn't understand what is happening. Third class he doesn't understand even more, fourth class he doesn't come. And then that continues. Because the student doesn't know when a new chapter starts, when if he or she were there, he or she could have understood. And that way, suddenly you find that a student is completely out of the whole scene. Now, this is a, a, a red flag because that student is going to fail. And it's our job to ensure that he or she does not fail. Right? It's our job to ensure that he or she goes out learning. Now, unless there is a rule that sort of forces students to come to the class, such students who, who uh, doesn't come to a particular class, doesn't understand after that, then doesn't feel like coming and then simply drops off. These have to be stopped for the sake of the student systems. And often the students don't understand that. Hmm? I don't like a class. Uh, well, as I said, there are good teachers, bad teachers, not bad teachers, they non-expressive teachers. In those cases, there are also a support system, there are TAs, you can also reach out to the TAs, ultimately you have to learn the subject. Our job is to make you learn the subject and for that it is necessary to attend the class. Otherwise, see, uh, how much did students learn during the COVID period? I would say very little. Why? Because there is no personal interaction between the teacher and the student. And that is why it is necessary to have a system that encourages personal interaction between the teacher and the student in the class. So, we have a rule. Now, notice if you are casual, uh, not casual, if you casually miss a class or two, nothing happens because 
the the number that you have to be present is only 60%. 60% is quite, quite, you know, that 40% is quite big leverage, right? So you fall uh, sick for seven days, nothing happens. But if you are habitual in not attending the class, then something happens. So it is only those cases which are supposed to be red flag cases. To prevent those red flag cases, we have this rule. Hmm? Yes, students have to attend classes. But, but as I said, it is always possible to miss a class or two. I am a, a event coordinator of Incubesta and therefore I have to be busy in something. Yes, spend, it, spend a week on that, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. See, when I was a student, I mean, I can tell you that I didn't attend all the classes. Hmm? I didn't attend all the classes because I was in the thick of organizing things. But there was a system that I would tell my friend there, you attend this class and in the evening you tell me what was taught. So he will teach me. That's how it went. So at the end of the day, when the semester closes, I knew everything. Even though I did not attend the class. Due to, due to very, you know, reasonable reasons. Because I was organizing something, right? So such things might happen. You have, you have got uh, inter ISR sports meet, inter ISR cultural okay. meet, you know, inter hostel competitions and these, that. So all these activities are there due to which one or two classes can be missed. It's understandable. But that liver is there. Ultimately, you have come here to learn by here. <laughs> Therefore, the system has to be such that you go, go out after learning. So this addresses the issue of those students uh, who deliberately don't attend the classes or don't like attending the classes because like they may be chilling out or enjoying uh, during the class hours. So the attendance system forces them to at least attend the classes. They will attend the class so they will uh, listen to the professor until at least at the end of the day they will gain something from the class. So or they will know what they don't know. So, suppose they did not come to some classes, they attend one because they have to, hmm. and they realize that okay, this part I, I did not really learn. They will ask us, uh, another student, huh? hmm. can you just, just tell me, or go to the TA, can you tell me what was taught? These are advantages. So, even if you do not understand everything that is being taught in the class, because you have not learned, learned something that is prerequisite of that, still it is useful to be in the class. So this addresses uh, these class of students. Other than that, there is another class of student whose number is lesser compared to the first. Uh, these are the students uh, who feel that I don't want to go to the class because I don't learn much or I, I have a greater pace of learning. I feel the classes are not uh, going that way. I can learn staying in the hostel far better. I will go only to the classes when I have doubt or the top uh, during those classes in which the difficult topic is being taught but that way the attendance will not be covered in the 60 percent but uh, if you see exam results like they can be nine cgpa nine pointers so isn't the system in general the entire education system of india attendance system isn't that unfair for those kind of students a system cannot be made looking at the exceptions these are the exceptional cases Okay, if the system is made looking at the exceptions, to cater to the exceptions, then we will fail the people who really need this. Hmm? So it's not good. A system cannot be made based on exceptions. So can't there be any, uh, some sort of flexibility in the system to accommodate these kind of students? Who will be then responsible for those cases where a student doesn't come and fails? Because the student, the system gave them flexibility. Hmm? So we do not want our students to fail. Therefore, the system, and yes, a few exceptional cases would have to get bored by coming to the class, according to you. <laughs> that they get bored coming to the class, they would have utilized their time better. Mostly, uh, this is a result of bit of superiority complex built during the school days. Hmm? Everybody praised them. They thought that they are above everybody else. 
it's not really good it's not really good but then i have also seen students who who are able to to assimilate from various books better than they can do in the class i would not say that such students do not exist but that's why i started by saying that these students are exceptional and a system cannot be aimed at the exceptional cases i think i have one last question yes. okay uh, it is also related to academics that uh, what are your views on uh, integrating science as well as engineering uh, courses in our system like uh, iser bhopal also has uh, bachelors of engineering well the system was not built for that hmm. iits are for that right so there since this is the country has systems of institutions which work, which are focused on engineering education system institutions focused on science education now a science institute can think of bringing in a bit of engineering it's possible but it is up to the institutes when the institute feels mature enough that we have been able to cater to the requirements of the basic sciences now we can expand it's a judgment call they have taken that judgment call we have not right we are still deciding to focus on or strengthening our science uh, background that's it but uh, since i have studied in engineering i can tell you that in order to study engineering you have to start uh right from the beginning that means uh what to say uh, electrical engineering mechanical engineering civil engineering chemical engineering all these means that these are applied sciences but that applied thing has to start rather early these these institutions start engineering education right from the first year though they study basic sciences in the first year but still they have to study this in our system therefore we need to have many changes in order to accommodate that uh, i'm not sure how it can be done within the system that we have here because the first year is common second year is pre major the third year so the time available to study engineering topics might not prepare one for a career in engineering that's what my impression at least but it it is a, it's a call for individual institutions one i i sir has decided to start a engineering uh, discipline is fine so okay so i have something to say as i said that you the students here in this institute have come and knowing that the institute's mandate is to prepare students for a career in research as i said that does not mean you have to be in career be a career in research and teaching you can go to any any other career but this is what the system is for okay so when you make any suggestion you have to remember there is a mandate we are uh, the institute has a specific mandate whatever we are doing whatever decisions we are making whatever uh, rules and regulations we are framing all of that with that in mind a student who who after some years will become a a researcher some years later will become a teacher that is what we have in mind now imagine why each and every rule is framed when you look at that see that the institute has to build me as a future scientist as a future professor as a future builder of the next generation so look at each and everything from that perspective we expect something out of you what is that you are the future of the country in terms of science okay and therefore it may be hard sometimes harsh but still we have to get the best out of you our job is to get the best out of you and all the rules and regulations everything are geared towards that 
Now, again I'm telling you, that does not mean you should not do anything else. You should do, do many things else, but the institute is mandated towards that. Whenever you, you look at something, some rule, some regulation, try to criticize, remember, this is what we are supposed to bring out of you. Okay. So, my appeal to you is that you have a system of schools, affairs council, SAC, which is supposed to be a, the means of students self-governance. You should not have to be governed by somebody. There should be a system within the students for self-governance, right? For, for this, the SAC is there. The more you take part in that, the more you take responsibilities, the, the more you discharge responsibilities, the more you learn how to act responsibly in society when you go out. That's one thing. Take part in extracurricular activities, whatever type. Take part. Because extracurricular activities, uh, uh, for example, sports, teaches you what to, what to do when you fail. You cannot win a football match all the time. Right? Students failing and getting depressed is surprising to me. Do you do, do you win every time you play a football match? No. Sports teaches you how to fail and how to accept failures. It's important. So point is that you have to you have to be in sports and games, you have to take part in extracurricular activities because the world is not about just studies. Study well, but also do this and take responsibilities. That's most more important. Everybody has to take responsibilities. That's all. Sir, uh, one last request. Sir, would you please, uh, in your own words, just ask everyone to subscribe to the YouTube channel of Isaac Campus Radio. <laughs> <laughs> that is something you should do. <laughs> you, are, you are the guys, right? I am I'm not, not running the Isaac Campus Radio. Uh, no, sir. The channel is uh, for the people of Isaac <laughs> and not just for the people, for the people who are about to come to Isaac and the, uh, the, for the people who have already passed out. So, we are trying to create this channel as a connector between these two zones. So, and I, I guess that everybody who belongs to Isaac Kolkata is a part of the channel. So, for that reason. Yeah, I request everybody to subscribe to this channel run by the ISRK uh, Campus Radio. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.